astronomers have spotted something in the nearest star system to us, which if it turns out to be a planet, would be the first time inside the habitable zone that a planet has been directly imaged from our solar system. In this video we're going to be looking at a potential Alpha Centauri A, also known as Ritual Centaurus planet, so let's get to it. Well, first of all, we see here the brightest stars in our sky. You can see that Alpha Centauri comes in at number 4, that's including the Sun of course, and follows the brightest extrasolar stars in our sky, the A-class sequence star of Sirius, and the A-class giant of Canopus. We mustn't forget that the Alpha Centauri system is actually three stars though, of which the brightest members are known as A and B, or officially, A as Rigel Centaurus and B as Tolyman. These make up the total brightness of course, and together they have an apparent magnitude of minus 0.27, Individually, Rigel Centaurus is much brighter at minus 0.07, slightly brighter than the stars of Vega and Betelgeuse, and Tolyman is really struggling to make the list, and is similar to the yellow giant of Pollux at plus 1.10 apparent magnitudes. So, what about the evidence? Here we see an Im image B on the right is a zoomed in image of the image on the left. The white dashed circle represents the inner edge of the habitable zone of Rigel Centaurus. The bright area labelled C1 is the planetary candidate. As things stand, we cannot confirm however it is a planet, as it could just be dust, perhaps an image glitch, or even just an asteroid. If it is a planet though, it could possibly be the best candidate for life we have, and even better than the recently discovered Proxima b planet, given that it would not necessarily be tidally locked, and could have a day-night cycle, similar to our own blue world. In this first graphic, we see a view from the possible planet orbiting Rigel Centaurus, which in Arabic translates to the foot of the centaur. On the right hand side, we can see its smaller companion, Tolyman, a K1v orange dwarf star. In 1995, Tolyman and Rigel Centaurus reached Apastron. They were as many as 35.6 astronomical units apart. Since then, though, they have been approximating each other towards periastron at just 11.2 astronomical units apart. The closest approach, interestingly, should occur in 2035. The system itself is thought to be of a similar age to our Sun, meaning that this planet, like our Earth, would have had ample time to develop even intelligent life. We can see now Rigel Centaurus rising in the distance, and we see a depicted desert-like planet which would probably be on the inner edge of the habitable zone, maybe too hot for large-scale habitation, though we may find some areas perhaps in the poles or around cool ocean currents flowing towards the equator. It is of course quite difficult for binary stars to have planetary systems. If such a situation occurred, here both Rigel Centaurus on the left and Tolyman on the right would have an imaginary safe zone circling them in which planets orbiting could be stable and not influenced sufficiently by the other star's immense gravity. This disk, as we can see on the graphic here, is around 2.8 astronomical units for Rigel Centaurus, whereas around Tolyman there would only be around 2.5 astronomical units of safe space. That obviously leaves a large gap between the twin stars where other bodies would be thrown out of the system. Luckily though, this potential planet is certainly within this green zone, as we can see here in the graphic. Now we can see a depicted future colony on the planet known as Centaurus City. Potentially it could be our first large-scale extrasolar system colony. Rigel Centaurus, once you take out the difficulties associated with it being a binary star, is actually a very habitable star and more importantly, the nearest one like our Sun and the, which is the only place we know where life can thrive. Any planet far enough from its host star means less possibility of tidal locking like those close into a red dwarf on Proxima Centauri. We can see the distant Tolyman rising and shining at around minus 19 apparent magnitude, very faint in the sky and not providing very much warmth or light at all, but still bright enough to shine. Rigel Centaurus is the undisputed powerhouse of the system, and as we can see, a much brighter object in the sky. In fact, it is substantially more powerful than our sun, at around 1.2 solar masses and 1.5 solar luminosities. The nearest other system interesting to Alpha Centauri is not however the Sun, it's actually the Lumen Brown Dwarfs at 3.6 light years distance, just slightly closer than our own solar system. Also interesting here that in May 2028, the Alpha Centauri system, from our perspective, will actually pass in front of another red star. Here, this means we may see evidence of what's known as an Einstein ring, 
where you can see the gravitational influence of Alpha Centauri spewing it around in a warped image of the star behind. There is, however, an issue with this being a rocky world, as it is estimated to be at least 20 masses of Earth if it does exist at all. This means that if it were rocky, it would have to be a huge super Earth. Perhaps the more likely outcome is a Neptune like world. Of course, being within the habitable zone of Rigel Centaurus, though, this would make it a lot hotter than our own solar system's cousin. Perhaps we could would see constant rainstorms with lightning flashes all the time, even faster winds and thousands of kilometers deep oceans. The Breakthrough Starshot mission is a mission that perhaps in the near future could reach 15 to 20 percent of light speed, and in 20 to 30 years of travel, might be able to reach such a world. I've named it Rigel Neptunus, as that's the best name I could come up with. Um, we would, of course, however, have to allow 4.3 years for the signal just to return to Earth. There is also a hidden issue as well, because if we wanted to slow down, an orbital insertion into the Alpha Centauri system, we'd also need to figure out a way of doing it. This means, unfortunately, that the Alpha Centauri system it may not be the first destination for a Starshot mission. Somehow we have to slow down the space probe. The largest local star, of course, is the Dog Star of Sirius A, and that would provide far more gravity or aero breakage than anything in the Alpha Centauri system, and it might make it a more potential first destination for this pro Project Starshot mission. That said, what a world this place would be, Rigel Neptunus, a mystical blue and white cloud world overlooking swirling seas of water and methane. We can see in the right hand side Ptolemon barely breaking through the clouds on the right hand side, and Rigel Centaurus likewise distorted by the hundreds of kilometers thick clouds or layers above. Looking back from the planet, with Rigel Centaurus and Ptolemon behind us, we would see a similar sky to the one we see from Earth. Except, look in the right hand corner, here we can see the sun at apparent magnitude of 0.4 and another star in the sky that doesn't appear in our own skies, a red star similar in brightness to the sun. That would of course be Proxima at apparent magnitude of 0.5 because it's only 13,000 astronomical units distance, it's close enough to hold its own in the Alpha Centauri system skies. Other notable differences would include that Sirius would appear almost in line with the Orion's huge supergiant star of Betelgeuse. Sirius, however, slightly further from the Alpha Centauri than the solar system, at 9.52 light years, would remain the brightest star in our sky, even at its Alpha Centauri. Don't forget, if you'd like more information on the Alpha Centauri system, we do have other videos in which they protagonise. We look at Proxima Centauri's planets, B and C and measure exactly how far Alpha Centauri is from the Sun. Proxima also features in our latest video on Red Dwarf classifications, so check it out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, as it does help the channel grow. Hope you've enjoyed the content. What do you think the planet would be like yourself? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you on the next one.